Everybody, I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Today's matchup features a very good defense. The Rams are top 10 in fewest points allowed, and they'll be up against the 49ers offense that wants to hang a big number on them. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. It's the final three weeks of the season. Still plenty to play for here as we're underway in week 15. This is taken about seven yards deep. He's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. They'll be led out by their 6'4 QB from the University of Tennessee. It's Joshua Dobbs. And no excitement, unless, the, unless you're on the defensive team of last week, in his numbers. Because the only excitement he really generated was the one interception he threw. Yeah, no touchdown passes. Yeah, and his team wasn't real thrilled about that. And they lost the game. So, I know this week has been tough on him because he's been working hard. Fundamentals, footwork, finding the right targets. And bottom line, how do they get a win? Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Dobbs now on second down. Well, it's complete to the former Niner, Delaney Walker. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 
The numbers for Walker from last week's effort. Six catches, 87 yards. And I'd certainly expect them to use him quite a bit because he runs excellent routes, has good hands, and knows how to get open. So here we go, first and ten now. down just shy of the 45. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Playoff quickly. Again, they run with Gurley. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. Let's and go. oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. On first down, it's Gurley. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the third. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Here's Dobbs to throw. And that one got tipped. Kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. You got to give some credit there. Able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Play action, it's Dobbs. And locates Walker, complete. And he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Brandon, lest my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, that's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. Back to the ground game here. Gurley. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. The numbers on the ground for Gurley last week. 15 carries, 66 yards. After the last game, they had plenty of reason to be confident in their running game. And even though they're facing a top-10 defense, they're not going to shy away from doing what they do best. Make them adjust to them. Make them stop what they do before they go to any type of a change-up. First and goal, Gurley. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. They're mounting a nice drive here. Good chunk of yardage there again. O-line, they've been solid this drive. They have that look about them right now that says, if you do anything but run the ball behind us, you're crazy. They have really moved it well on this drive, and they want to finish it off the same way. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Tom Gurley with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Rams take it right down and score on the opening drive. 
You'd have to imagine for a team that's lost three straight games, scoring first in this first quarter has to feel pretty good. It has to feel great for them, and also it's a nice signal to the rest of the team. Because we talk about complimentary football all the time. So they've now signaled to the defense, now signaled to the kicking game, hey, we're here to play in this one. We're going to do our part. Let's see if you guys will do the exact same, and we can break this losing streak. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run. This fielded at the two. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. this up right near the 45 yard line seven yards on the pick up there and it'll leave him with a second and three that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream wasn't it guys picked up all of their assignments created a nice gap for the running back to get through pick up seven yards yeah he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying we got it going boys let's keep it going now Kessler throwing on second down and his throw here is incomplete Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Kessler going to try and throw on third. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. At the end of one, it's a close game here early on. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. On fourth down on is Dustin Colquitt to kick this away. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. This is taken at about the 14. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. The Omen's effort on that last drive. Seven carries, got the touchdown as well. And the O-line probably got a little extra oxygen on the sideline in between. And deservedly so, because they were also calling for him to continue to get the ball because there's a rhythm that gets established, right? When you're running it well and the back's getting the ball and he's in sync and reading blocks and the offensive line wants to continue to pound away. Haven't met an offensive lineman yet that likes to pass block more than he likes to run block. And that last drive, we saw the, the end result, didn't we? Yep, and all were rewarded with a trip to Painter. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? typically a blitz and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen now that allows your blitzers to get there on second down Dobbs and incomplete there a nice hit jars the ball free and brings up third down and Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. Shotgun. Here's Dobbs. Trying to force it to his tight end, Walker, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. And he 
may want to track down that football because that's interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. The 49er offense, they're coming back out onto the field, and we're going to give you a look at the playoff picture now into the weekend in the NFC. And it's right about this time of year you start to say this is when the cream rises to the top. Week 15, three weeks left to go, but still plenty to be determined. And I think for most teams, the obvious is to try... the number one or number two seed. But when you look at it across the league and in throughout the history of trying to get to the Super Bowl, the teams you really fear are the ones that get hot and sometimes sneak in at a five or a six seed because we see those teams actually get to the Super Bowl and occasionally win it. Yeah, you think of the Giants a couple of times. Steelers have done it. You're right. It has happened and will happen more in the future, I'm sure. On second down, Hill... Just a couple there on the second down run. Now they're staring at a third and eight situation. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And he's got some space here. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Now Hill. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage. Back to the four-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists. And if you're doing it, you're probably going to play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is the time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. To throw is Kessler. And he hauls it in in the end zone. Touchdown, San Francisco. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. That time, a six-play drive. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And partner, I'm going to make a quick pivot here and ask you to play general manager. It's well documented. They're last in the league in offense, number 32. What changes might they make? And this is where you have to be almost like a chess master as a general manager because you have a few things at your disposal that you need to use. Obviously, the draft, free agency. Maybe you can make some trades, but also look at your practice squad. Have you been grooming players to promote and give them an opportunity to play as well? That way, you start to supplement as well as replace guys that need it. Gun, Dobbs. 
And complete to the tight end Walker right side. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And San Francisco gets set to go here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense. who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. Kessler now on first down. Underneath here to Hill. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. and 10 it's Kessler and it's a short one here complete to his tight end and he'll be brought down right around the 37 a gain of six there on first nice rhythm throw there on first down he located his tight end made a nice easy pitch and catch hoping he can break a tackle or two wasn't able to do that there but still good yardage Set up the screen to Hill. Room to run past midfield. And a nice gain of 21 yards. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Now a first down carry, it's Hill. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to run there. Looking to throw on first is Kessler. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Second down now after the pass completion. Shotgun, Kessler. A dump off now to Hill. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Kessler. And he's got 
this inside the 10 to the 9 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come. After will be caught at about the five. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Here's Kessler to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete pressure and that's certainly going to be a key to this game going forward and that time they were able to get in there and influence the throw remember quarterbacks got to get rid of it they don't have the tuck roll that they can fall back on anymore now this will be the ninth play on this drive let's go green 39 to throw again is Kessler and that is incomplete 16 seconds now on the clock. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Third and goal, Kessler. And that'll be incomplete with 11 seconds remaining now. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from then on out. On the NFL scoreboard, an update from up in Seattle. And early on, the driver's seat belongs to the Seahawks. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. So they kick it through to take the lead. There is a little bit of time left, though, here in the second quarter. And while they're concerned about not giving up a big return or giving up points themselves going into the half, how good do they feel, though, putting points on the board themselves right near the end of the first half? now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. They'll throw now on the final play. And this one hauled in by Tavon Austin. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. So we have reached halftime here with a visiting 40. Uh, never mind, Larry, forget your halftime report. Apparently, we are set for the third quarter of action already. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? It's a loss of four. Now third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. 
No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. They chalked that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. The well-executed slant routes are based on timing, and that one was hit just right. Ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly, right to the receiver. He catches it on the run, and you saw the end result. Big time run after catch. They love those rack yards. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Jamarcus Lawrence able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. And he was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you get. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Alec Ogletree. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Second down following the run. Play clock winding down. They'll run again with Pumphrey. And he is knocked down and then landed on pretty awkwardly at the 49. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They'll run it now out of the gun. And hit behind the lot. He lost the football. It's loose. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he'll take this into the end zone for a San Francisco touchdown. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room where they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They begin the drive with Pumphrey. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Let's go! Again, it's Pumphrey. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly.
And the play clock's running down. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. Flex Brown! 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 Take four! Take four! Dobbs. And the Niners get there and bring him down. David Irving in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a defensive player of the year at the other, and they just locked people down. Dobbs under pressure again and down he goes again Brandon what I remember most about playing with guys who knew how to rush the passer they would just tell you just cover people for me just long enough for me to get there and that's exactly what happened on that play he gets this one away and boy it's another boomer and take it right on the 30 Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Niners will go on offense. First and 10. Now this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Trying to get the offense going with Hill. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Hang on now. Three, 19. Shotgun snap. Kessler. He hits Beasley right side. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 12 yards there as they move the chains. I don't want to make a story where there's not one, but he threw the three interceptions last week. Looked a little uncomfortable. He looks much more comfortable today. Yeah, just one pick so far in his team lead. So now they can play complimentary football, meaning if he takes care of the ball and his offense, well, you know, they're humming along. The defense doesn't have to be out there as long. He's taking care of his guys on the other side of the ball. They're enjoying a fourth-quarter advantage. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On second down, Hill. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone fraction, defense. A little eager there coming in from his outside linebacker position. You think the hard count got him there? Yeah, yes. maybe that extra hut, you know, <laughs> that, that extra emphasis on it. Got him to jump, and they picked up five yards. Now a play fake here on first down. His throw incomplete. 
You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Second down now. Hill. And not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And they're going to have a third down. Brandon, it's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. And now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. The Niners on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Kessler. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. of a full three yards and now it's second down seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game how have they done it so successfully to me it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting and you know brandon when they do those they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run the best runs for the top running back those are the ones you focus on and want to take away and they've done that pretty successfully in this game time for a break We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Coming left is Hill. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave them with a fourth down. One of the things I love about this game is there's a match of wits throughout the game. Who's going to get the advantage? Who's going to catch someone off guard? It's like the offense thought they might catch a defense off balance with that play call, but unfortunately, that didn't work for them. And Bullock will put this one through, and that will open the lead up now to 20-7. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. And a nifty return there as he's all the way up past the 40-yard line. There's no downplaying that we all knew that this was a critical possession. And to get a return like that to start things off, that's the spark that they needed. That's the spark they were looking for. As the Rams offense comes back out, here is the NFC playoff picture coming into the weekend. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Fighting him off. Oh, that was dangerous. Throw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Flush to his right. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Tried to go for the big one there on second down. Now they're likely down to their final two plays. And you know they've got to keep going for the big shot, right? So defensively, you play what they call top down. Nothing behind you. Make everything get completed in front. A fourth quarter score now from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. And the Cowboys have wound up winning that one. Dak Prescott, two touchdown passes in the W. complete 
I don't know. He had to be pretty quick with his fingers to start and stop after the ball hit the ground. I'm giving him some credit. No, I'm thinking about the mental focus, you know? Yeah. Or the mental oh, focus. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Gotta stay with it. That's true. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about Slim and none? Well, Slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. They'll run on first down. Hill got some real estate inside the 30. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. A rope.